Well, hey, everybody. God bless you. Thanks for joining me. This is Fred Kropp coming to you from the Healing Rooms Apostolic Center in Santa Maria, California. And today I want to talk to you about the power of waiting on the Lord. I bet you heard that phrase, right? How many have ever heard that phrase? Uh, come on, just leave a comment. And say, yes, I've heard that phrase. They that wait upon the Lord, right? shall renew their strength. Amen. Well, that's what I want to talk about today, about what is waiting on the Lord? What are the benefits of waiting on the Lord? How do we wait on the Lord? I want to share all those things because guess what? I just think that many, many Christians are just running around like banshees. Come on. They're just running around uh, doing so much. We're so busy. We got to look at our phones. We got to look at our internet. We got to watch our TV, we got to do all these things. We got things, places to go, people to see, so on. And we're busy, busy, busy. And somehow we think that we can get stronger by being really busy. But that's true when maybe it comes to working out for your physical body that you get stronger as you work out consistently and so on. Uh, or we gain knowledge through education or we practice, uh, you know, a skill or a talent. All those things are really good. But when it comes to, guess what? When we're facing a spiritual warfare, uh, some of those things don't work, okay? Some of those things are not the things that are going to make you strong in the Lord. And so the kingdom is an upside-down kingdom. Or it's opposite from the ways of the world. In the world, we think that more activity means more productivity. But in the kingdom, uh, it is about prayer and waiting upon the Lord that causes us to become strong. So maybe today you're feeling mentally or emotionally overwhelmed. I've just got such great news to you for you. Maybe you're depressed or you're discouraged, you're distraught, you're disillusioned, you're disappointed, uh, you know, you're drained. But I've got good news. That's right. The good news is that they that wait upon the Lord. Let me just read the theme verse for you. Now, if you're joining me on Facebook, make sure you click share. Also, leave your comments and your prayer requests in the chat as I will be praying for you. And also, uh, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can catch up on this whole series on how to strengthen yourself in the Lord. Well, let's uh, read our theme verse for this session, and then we're going to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us. All right, are you ready for that? Come on. Here's what it is. Isaiah 40. I bet some of you already know this, these, past, this, these few verses. Isaiah 40, verses 29 to 31. Here's what it says. Isaiah writes and says, He gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, He increases strength. Even youths or young people will faint and be weary, but and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord, come on somebody, those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for uh, that you have things that you have given us that we can do. And one of them to become strong in you is to wait on the Lord. And we're thanking you and praising you that you have given us, oh Lord, the ability uh, to, uh, you know, to be able to understand how these things work in the kingdom of God. So Lord, right now we're asking you to speak to us. We're asking you to help us to, Lord, help us to not only hear what I'm about to share, but help us to apply it to our life. We pray for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you say amen to that? Well, the Bible says to be strong in the Lord, Ephesians chapter 6, and the strength of his might. So how do we get strong in the Lord? Well, as I mentioned, uh, you know, we have times where we just feel like we are mentally, emotionally, spiritually just depleted, and we don't know what to do. You know what? In the Bible, there were people in the Bible who had the same experience. King David Remember I shared an earlier message you can go back to about how David strengthened himself in the Lord. But David found himself in a situation where he was completely depleted. But the Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 30, verses 4 through 6, it talks about that David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. The Apostle Paul came to that same place when he was praying about a thorn in the flesh that had been given to him. It says to keep him from exalting himself. Now that's a secret right there. He's talking about pride. Pride is when you depend upon your own strength and ability. 
And so he went to the Lord in prayer and the Lord said, my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in your weakness. And so he said, I'll boast in my weaknesses that the power of Christ can work through me. And so both uh, David and Paul had same experiences just like us where they came to the place where they're like, we don't know what to do, we're out of strength. And they found that the secret was going to God and spending time waiting on the Lord. Come on, somebody. Now, uh, here's some scriptures that David wrote. Psalms 25, verse 5. He says, lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. On you I wait all the day. On you I wait all the day. Psalms 27, 14. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And so these uh, people, in fact, I've found that pretty much everyone that God has used mightily, not only in the Bible, but throughout Christian history, um, were people who learned how to get strength from waiting on the Lord. So I want to just highlight for you uh, some of the benefits of waiting on the Lord. Those of you that are joining and jumping in right now on Facebook uh, and or on YouTube, I'm talking about the power of waiting on the Lord. Amen. And uh, and so I'm going to talk with you about some of the benefits of waiting on the Lord. Now, again, make sure you click share, make sure you leave your comments, make sure you uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. But here, let, let me just give you a few of the benefits. Here's one, waiting on the Lord, obviously from a scripture we just read in Psalms 40, renews our strength. So as we wait on the Lord, it renews, and what it is, it's spiritual strength. It's the strength of your spirit man. Here's another one, waiting on the Lord causes you to see things from God's perspective. It says, those that wait on the Lord will mount up with wings like eagles. Now, eagles, what they do is, uh, one of the ways they defeat all the birds and things that would try to attack them is they just fly higher. They keep flying higher and higher. And eagles have what we call eagle eye, or they have the ability to see things from a high perspective. And so one of the things and the benefits of waiting on the Lord is it will cause you to rise up to your position of being seated with Christ in heavenly places, and you'll begin to see your problems, your situation, your circumstances from God's perspective instead of just from an earthly perspective. Um, Also, waiting on the Lord gives you strength to run the race and finish the course. Psalms 40 again, it says, they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So there's a real clue there about having a long-term Christian life, not just a flash in the pan, not just that I got saved, but I fall within, you know, a a year or so of being saved. How do I live the long, run the long-term race in God? Because Paul writes, he says, I've run the race, I've finished the course, and I've won the prize. Well, how do you do that? Well, here in Isaiah 40, it says, they shall run and not grow weary, and they shall walk and not faint. So as you begin to establish the practice in your life of waiting on the Lord is going to help you to be a long-term, effective, fruitful Christian. Another one is that waiting on the Lord causes God to work on your behalf. Now, here's one of my favorite verses of Scripture in the Bible. It's found in Isaiah 64, 4. Isaiah 64, 4. It's also quoted, I think, in First or Second Corinthians uh, Paul quotes this verse, Isaiah 64, 4 says, For since the world began, ear has not heard, nor has eye seen a God like you who works, another version says, acts on behalf of those who wait for him. Look at that. Why isn't that powerful? It says that while you're waiting, God is working. So how do I get God to work on my behalf? Well, Isaiah 64, 4. Eye has not seen nor has ear heard of a God like our God who works for those who wait for him. Wow, what's a powerful benefit, isn't it? Here's another one. Waiting on the Lord will cause you to know that God is with you. Psalms 46, 10 and 11, it says, Be still 
and know that I am God. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Psalms 46, 10 and 11. Be still and know that I am God. So when we wait on the Lord, and this is the thing, we're so busy, we're, uh, the, end, the Bible actually says the end times people are going to run around here to and fro, they're going to be going here and there, there's going to be travel everywhere, there's going to be just everything going so fast, knowledge is going to be coming on really fast, uh, you know, and that's happening, boy, just more and more things that are, that, that are, that are being discovered and happening, and it's going so fast, but uh, th- then we can be so distracted that we no longer hear God's voice or we no longer have an awareness that God is with us. But the secret is be still and know that I am God. Know that the Lord is with us. So again, a benefit. Those of you that are joining on Facebook, I'm talking about the power of waiting on the Lord. All right, here's another one. That is waiting on the Lord will bring you into God's rest. Uh, in Psalms 37, verse 7, Psalms 37 is a really powerful, powerful psalm. I would encourage you to go to it and read it and read it over and over again. There's so many promises in there. Uh, that's where it talks about delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. But one of the promises there is Psalms 37, 7. It says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way because of the man who carries out wicked schemes. And so here it is. He says, one of the ways that we enter into God's rest is by waiting on the Lord. Amen. And when you're, again, when you enter into God's rest, you're resting from your own striving, your own you know, turmoil, your own anxieties and all those things. We enter into the rest of God. Now, another thing that waiting on the Lord does is it binds us together with God. One of the most often translated words uh, for wait uh, in the Hebrew, in the Old Testament, means to bind together. It means to be like twisting a rope together, like you see a, a rope, that when you take little ropes and twist them together, it makes a very strong rope. And waiting on the, on the Lord binds us like a rope where we become strong because we're bound together with God. Now, I want to talk about next, what is waiting on the Lord? That's a good question, isn't it? What, what does it mean to wait on the Lord? Well, let me just give you a few uh, of the scriptures and insights of what the Bible says uh, is waiting on the Lord. Well, one is that waiting on the Lord is putting your trust in God. In Isaiah 51, verse 5, it says, The coastlands will wait upon me. On my arm they will trust. Uh, Of course, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make your path straight. So waiting on the Lord is putting your trust in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Do you need to trust in the Lord today? Maybe you've been putting your trust in other things and people and yourself and your own abilities, but it's time for us as believers in Jesus Christ to put our trust in God. Amen. It's on our money. Trust, you know, God in God we trust. It says that. So I'm talking about what is waiting on the Lord. And again, those of you that are joining me, I'm talking about the power of waiting on God. So here's another Uh, understanding of what waiting on the Lord is, and that is waiting on the Lord is putting your weight upon the Lord. So so waiting on the Lord is where, um, and I I had this phrase come to me this morning, wait until the weight is lifted. Wow, that's kind of corny, but hey, that's, I believe it's powerful. Wait until the weight is lifted. So waiting on the Lord is where you put your weight on the Lord. In 1 Peter chapter 5, Peter writes and he says this, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to those, to the humble. Therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him for he cares for for you. So what is it talking about? It's talking about that we are to humble ourselves. Again, pride, pride, let me just again give you the definition of pride. Pride is self-dependence. Humility is God-dependence. 
And so Peter writes, he says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you and in due time. In other words, he's going to lift you up out from under the weight. So we're under the weight. We're carrying the burden of life, the burdens of life, the burden of all our responsibilities or the burdens of, of the different anxieties and worries and fears. We're carrying all those things. And here Peter says, cast your care upon him. In other words, waiting on the Lord is, is putting our weight or the weights we're carrying on the Lord and letting him to carry them with us. Amen. Put your head in the yoke with Jesus, right? Come on, he said, come unto me, all you that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You'll find rest for your souls. Uh, another thing that waiting on the Lord is, and waiting on the Lord is looking and watching for God to show up. Again, uh, I think that sometimes we're just so in a hurry uh, we got it. We you know we have our church services. They're all timed out. We got 15 minutes of worship. Uh, we've got announcements. We got a 10 minute message, and then we need to get out of here because we're busy people. But listen, li listen to me. Uh, waiting on the Lord takes time. It means that we need to spend time in the presence of the Lord. The Bible says God inhabits the praises of his people. Uh, it's sad to say, I think in many of our worship services, the worship is so short, we haven't really praised the Lord long enough till the presence of the Lord becomes evident to us. And all of a sudden, wow, we're caught up in worship of God. But anyhow, I've gotten off track there. Waiting on the Lord is looking and watching for him to show up. Psalms 130 verses 5 and 6 says, uh, David writes and says, I will wait for the Lord, my soul waits, in, and in his word I do hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. Yes, more than those who watch for the morning. So he's talking about, you know, watchmen, uh, they have shifts that they take in the last watch. Uh, the fourth watch of the night is the last person to stand guard, and they're waiting for the sun to come up. They're waiting for uh, the, the dawning of the sun. And so here, uh, the writers in Psalms, I think it was David, it may not have been him, but you know, Psalms 130 says, uh, my soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. So waiting on the Lord is looking and watching for him to show up. And so God wants to show up, but we need to stop and wait for God to show up. Another thing uh, that waiting on the Lord is, is to put our focus on Jesus and on his grace, not on our circumstances. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 says, Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let look at this. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. How? Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And so here it is. It's, it's almost a, a, a quote from Isaiah 40, right? Sounds similar. It says, it says uh, that we are to lay aside every weight. Remember so I just said, you wait until the weight is lifted. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance. There's another clue there. Uh, maybe you're being ensnared by sin on a regular basis. Maybe the key and the secret to you overcoming is to spend time waiting on the Lord. And then he says, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. How? By looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. So waiting on the Lord is to set our focus, not on ourselves, not on our circumstances, but on Jesus. Just closing your eyes, just looking to Jesus, the Bible says, who is the author and finisher of our faith. In 1 Peter chapter 1, Peter chimes in on this. He says, therefore, Prepare your minds for action. Be sober-minded. Set your hope fully on the grace that will, be brought, that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Hey, listen, uh, I'm sure every one of you that are watching would like to have more revelation. Well, the key is to begin to wait on the Lord and look and set your focus on Jesus and the grace that will be brought to you through the revelation of Jesus Christ. So that's another thing that, uh, uh, that waiting on the Lord is. Another one is that waiting on the Lord is setting your expectation on God. 
and expectation is actually activating your faith. Psalm 62 verse 5 says, My soul waits silently for God alone, for my expectation is from Him. And by the way, that's where uh, in the New Testament, one of the words used for waiting or wait is the word prostikamai. Okay, I probably butchered that Greek word, but it means to sit and in a position or position yourself to receive and accept. It's to wait until you receive. And so one of the things that waiting on the Lord is, is to begin to sit and expect. I was thinking of an example of this, um, the, of what expectation is and waiting on the Lord is, is like, have you ever gone over somebody's house that they're making a meal for you and they're really an incredible cook and they're in the kitchen and you can smell the wonderful smells of what they're cooking and you're sitting at the table and let me tell you, you're all of a sudden you're starting to drool. You know, uh, your your expectation. You you can't wait. You've got a you got an attitude of expectation. Pretty soon that that food that I'm smelling right now is going to be put in front of me, and I'm going to get to taste it. Well, that's an example of what it means to the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. How do we taste and see that the Lord is good? By stopping and taking the time to wait upon the Lord. It means to wait on him until the answer comes through, not trying to make it happen by ourselves. I think this is where we get in trouble a lot of times. And just remember uh, how Abraham, God gave Abraham a promise that he was going to have a son. And it was a long period of time before it actually, before Isaac actually came into being or was born. And before that, you know, uh, Sarah was impatient and Abraham became impatient. And so they decided to do it another way and do it by their own works. And they produced an, uh, an Ishmael that became the enemy of the Jewish people or of Israel. And so uh, sometimes what happens is because we're not willing to wait uh, until God comes through, uh, then we'll do something that messes up or hurts us or uh, you know, brings a uh, you know, a thing that we really don't, didn't, weren't planning on to happen in our lives because we didn't take the time to stop and to wait on God. Again, Hebrews 4.10 says, for he who has entered his rest has ceased from his own works as God did from his. Now, I want to come down to this now. I want to talk to you in this last part. Those of you who are joining me, I'm talking about that how the power of being strong in the Lord by waiting on the Lord or the power of waiting on the Lord. And I just want to encourage you, uh, make sure you click share with this, make sure you leave your comments and your prayer requests. Also, again, you can uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can catch up or listen to this over and over again. And I'm talking about that they that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Come on, let's pray a prayer. Lord, teach us to wait on you. Teach us to wait on you, God. Well, how do we, that's the next question, how do we wait on the Lord? Well, I'm going to make it really, really, I'm just going to be very simplistic uh, that, so that every one of us can get it. Um, I just try to think, you know, uh, take complex truths in the Word and make them simple so I can understand them. And so I hope, I hope this helps you. So how do we wait on the Lord? Well, I have just four words that you will remember for sure. Everybody say, I'm going to remember this. That's right. Here they are. Stop, look, listen, and wait. Or just simply the three words, stop, look, and listen. So, Here's the thing. If you're going to wait on the Lord, you got to stop. That's right. You have to stop all other activity. Just sit down somewhere. Get in a quiet place. Sit down. Stop your activity. You know, again, I know that, uh, you know, as soon as you sit down, uh, the devil's going to come in and he's going to give you 99 things that you need to do right now. <laughs> I remember when I began to spend time praying an hour 
uh, the, when I first started praying an hour a day, uh, that I would get down on my knees and I'd start to pray. And all of a sudden, I'd be in my office or something. And I remember, oh my gosh, there's dust up on the windowsill. And that needs to be taken care of right now. It was like, that was like super important that I get the dust. Well, the dust has been there for a long time and it's going to be there, you know, later. But what it was, was a distraction. And so we have to, uh, what, we have to develop this discipline of waiting on the Lord. And here's what I would recommend. When you stop to spend time to wait on the Lord, just put a notepad there with you. And as the enemy brings all the things that you ought to be taking care of, you need to call so-and-so, you need to do this, you need to, you know, clean the garage, you need to, uh, you, know, uh, write, you know, write this message, or whatever, you know, there's so many things. Uh, you need to clean the house, you need to do this, you need to do that. Just make a list. Say, thank you, devil, for making my to-do list for later. So the first thing that you must do to wait on the Lord is you've got to stop. You've got to stop other activity sit down with your bible S turn off all other things maybe you might want to play some uh, music in the background but if the music distracts you then don't play the music all right um, uh, you know uh, i'm sure it's, it, it, you know it's important that we uh, worship god and enter into worship but then when it comes to waiting on the lord we can sit there with worship music going or just you know sit in the presence of worship singing but then there's a point where we've got to stop everything so we can just listen to the lord so we stop the next thing we need to do is to look and that is where we need to focus on God. Now, again, this is a discipline. Uh, in Hebrews, it says, come boldly to the throne of grace that you will find mercy and grace to help in time of need. Now, one of the things, there's a couple things that I do uh, is to use my imagination. And, uh, and so, in other words, I'll stop my activity and I'm going to set my focus on God. So I'll either see Jesus on the cross. I had this, you know, years ago began to see that I would come to Jesus with my needs and, and he would uh, reach down and say, give me your sin, give me your stress, give me your, 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 your hurt and your pain. And then he would hand to me the exact opposite. I call it the, the great exchange. Or I focus on Jesus or I focus that uh, what in, uh, when I'm waiting on the Lord, that I'm just sitting before the throne of God. Now, I don't know what the throne of God exactly looks like, but I'm just picturing as best as I know how, Lord, I'm here to wait upon you. Or, you know, I can just begin to see Jesus high and lifted up. Or I see that the Father is seated in heavenly places and there's Jesus and that I'm seated with them in heavenly places. But I'm setting my focus on God. In Colossians chapter 3, it says that we are to set our mind on things above and not on the things that are on the earth. And so when we're waiting on the Lord, we want to begin to set our focus on the Lord, begin to look unto Jesus, again, the author and finisher of our faith. So we stop, we stop all activity, and then we look, we set our focus. And then the third thing we do is to listen. So we begin to listen. Again, uh, you know, there's, there's a kind of a dialing down because uh, your mind is just going. That's why, by the way, where fasting comes in, fasting uh, is, is uh, a way of saying no to your soul. It's, it's a way of quieting yourself before the Lord. You, you fast, and, you're, and what I've found is then my focus, it's easier for me to focus and to hear God during times of fasting. Now, fasting doesn't change God. Fasting changes me. Amen. It gets me to quiet down my, all my, you know, my soul's just going, my mind, my emotions, my will are all going. But when I fast, all that seems to settle down, and then I, okay, then I begin to do the third thing here, which is to listen. Listen for thoughts listen for wisdom, ideas, insights, revelations, scriptures that God will just drop into you. Uh, and so we need to stop. We need to stop all of our activity. Secondly, we need to look. We need to set our focus on God. And then we need to listen. And so I found and sometimes, you know, waiting on the Lord isn't always uh, sitting in a chair somewhere 
and just, you know, sitting there being quiet. Sometimes you can just go for a walk with God. I do, I do this a lot where I'll just go walk and pray in the Spirit, and I'm just going on the walk, and while I'm walking, I am, you know, shutting out all other back activity. I'm setting my focus on God. I'm praying in the Spirit. Praying in tongues is what I mean. And then as I'm going along, I begin to get thoughts from God. That's where I get revelations about what he wants me to talk about or to teach about or things that he wants to say to me. So we stop our activity, we set our focus on God, and then we listen. And so uh, I want to just encourage us as I come to the end of this session about they that wait upon the Lord. Let me just uh, say, read that passage again in Isaiah 40, verses 29 to 31. Amen. We're talking about, those of you that are joining here, we're at the very uh, end of this session, and uh, we're talking about the power of waiting on the Lord. And it's Isaiah 40, verses 29 to 31. It says, He, God, gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, He increases strength. Even youths or young people will faint and be weary. The young men will utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Well, God wants you to be strong in Him. And again, I've been doing this whole series on how to strengthen yourself in the Lord. And so uh, I, I just want to encourage you, begin to put into practice Waiting on the Lord. I highlighted all the benefits. And now I told you, well, how do I do it? By stop, look, and listen. And, and what I'm talking about, not just listen with your ears. Listen with your inner man ears. Listen with your spiritual ears to hear the voice of God. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and another they will not follow. I guarantee, and by the way, let me just say one more thing about that. I have found that, you know, it just seems like, wow, I, I've done times where I've just waited on the Lord. I've just sat there maybe for an hour. I don't know how long, but I'll sit there for a period of time and I really don't hear anything. I don't feel anything. I don't experience anything. I might, I might feel maybe the weight of something lift off me, but I don't really feel anything. But then when I go to be effective for the Lord, I just, the power of God just comes. And all I did was wait on the Lord. And so it's time for the world to see the power of God, the presence of God manifest through you and me, through our lives. I believe that Peter spent lots of time waiting on the Lord so that when he would walk the streets, people would put their sick in the streets so that his shadow, which was the presence of God going through him, touching them, would heal them. And so God is trying to raise up an army of people who are strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might, the Bible says, so that we can stand and resist the devil. Come on. And we can stand with the full armor of God and we defeat the enemy because we've been waiting on the Lord. Well, let me pray for you at the end of this right now. Uh, Lord, I pray for everyone that's watching this video. God, I pray that they would begin to develop the habit and the practice and the discipline of waiting on the Lord and having their st strength renewed and rising up so where they begin to see things from your perspective and that they are able to run a long-term race, finish the race, finish the course, and win the prize that you have created for them when they go to be with you. God, I pray for my brothers and sisters if they have any needs right now. I pray for healing. I pray for breakthrough. I pray for miracles. I pray that even as they put into practice this way in the Lord, they begin to see major breakthroughs happen in their life. God, I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you say amen? Well, hey, this is again Fred Kropp coming to you from the Healing Rooms Apostolic Center here in Santa Maria where we have services on Monday night uh, at 6 p.m., Tuesday at 9.30, 
a.m. Wednesday at 9.30 a.m. and, and 10, 10 o'clock on Thursday, we have a Bible study. And during the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we have teams ready to pray for you. Or you can get online ministry by simply going to our website and click and uh, request online ministry. Well, again, uh, so glad to be with you. I love you, my brothers and sisters. Hey, pray for me too. Come on. Uh, I need your prayers because, uh, I, you know, I've, God's starting to put more and more on my plate and I want to know what to say yes to and what to say no to. And I want to be redeeming the time uh, and being effective for God's kingdom. So anyhow, thank you for your prayers and your encouragement. Uh, be blessed, my brothers and sisters. Again, I want you to know that God loves you, Jesus loves you, and I love you. Be blessed in Jesus' name, amen.